Casey here with CL Creative, where I'm teaching you web design and Webflow one video at a time. And today we're gonna look at how to build a complex pop-up inside of Webflow. Last time, we looked at how to build a simple pop-up, just one pop-up that pops up over your entire screen. But today we're gonna look at how you can build a more complex pop-up structure. So think about pop-ups on multiple items inside of a collection list or just inside of a grid or think about uh, it's custom navigation or a custom menu that you have built. That's what we're going to look at today, how to build that and how to, how to make that open and close without giving you any sort of trouble. We're not going to use any sort of JavaScript or anything like that. We're simply going to use the animation panel inside of Webflow. So let's jump to the computer and check that out. All right, well, here we are inside of the computer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the HTML. I'm going to show you the CSS that you need, as well as I'm going to show you the interactions. And really, we're going to focus a lot on what makes the magic of this happen. So if we just get started, we have our benefits component. And this is basically just a grid with two benefit items inside of this. Now, I haven't gone through the trouble to make this into a CMS you know, collection list, but you could, and it would actually make this uh, interaction easier to set up. In this instance, when it's static, you have to set uh, different interactions up on each of the different items inside of your your grid uh, in order for it to work in the way that we're gonna we're gonna be looking at it right here. So if you have something like this, I would encourage you to set this up through the CMS. I did not do that because I want to show you the wrong way and the right way in order to set this up and, and kind of what the differences are. So that's why I did not drive it through the CMS for you know this particular video. All right, so we've got our benefit item, we've got our benefit image wrapper, and inside of that I have placed my modal. And the reason I've done that is so that you can have access to this button down here, whether the modal was open or closed. And so this right here, our benefit image wrapper, it is important that this be position relative so that you can set your modal pop-up to position absolute full. And that's exactly what I have done here. And I've also set this to display flex. This is the mo item modal pop-up to display flex, align center, and justify center. On this, I have placed a gradient behind it with 35% opacity just to darken the area. Uh, you don't have to have the border radius, it's just for styling purposes so that it matches here. And I have a background filter with a blur of 5% or 5 pixels. Again, not necessary, but I thought that it looked better than just having the overlay there. Then I have my modal content wrapper with some content inside of this. And I have a box shadow set on there, as well as I've got the width to 80% so that it's not getting you know too big and looking weird. And I have some padding set on this as well. And the Z index is you know pretty high, 9 out of 9. That way it always is staying on top. And the same thing with our item modal pop-up. I have a Z index set on that. And I just set that to 9 out of 9, 8. So that just to make sure that this modal content wrapper is not behind that. Um, so, and we've got our close button here as well. Okay, so that is the HTML, that is the CSS. Let's pop into the interactions and let me show you what I have going on here. And so let's just look at these. I'm going to click on the more info and it's going to pop one up and I can click on that and it'll close it. Same thing over here. All right, so this is driven, and, and I'm going to show you the right way to do this. I'm going to show you the wrong way to do this. So let's focus on the wrong way first. Uh, all right, so the wrong way to do this, if you want to have multiple ways to close the pop-up, is to set a first click animation that opens the pop-up on your button, and then to set a second click animation that closes the button on your pop-up and let me show you why so if I click on the first right that's first click it opens my pop-up 
I click it again, that second click, that closes my pop-up exactly what we want to happen. And if you only have one way that you are opening and closing a pop-up, this is perfect for you. If you want multiple ways, which is what most people are used to, then you need to have a th another way to close it. And we do have that. I have that set up here. If I click on this button, it's going to close my pop-up. Now, the problem is when I go back and click on the original button, the pop-up does not open. And the reason that takes place is because it's looking for two clicks. The first click, it's looking for an event that takes place, and when it gets that click, it is going to open the pop-up. Now it's switched, and it's looking for an event that's going to take place, another click on that button, and when that takes place, it's going to close the pop-up. Well, what we've done is we have kind of we've short circuited it by clicking here. So we're closing the pop up with this button, with this X, and now we haven't made a second click here. So I click it and then nothing happens. Well, I've made the second click, so now I got to click again in order for it to work out. That's a bad user experience. We don't want our users to have that type of experience. Instead, what we want to take place is what I have set up over here on this second one. You click the button, you click the button again, it closes. You click the button, you go over here and you click the X, it closes, and then you come back and you click the button, it opens back up. So how did I set that up? How is that different from this one? Well, I, what I don't have is on this button here, well, first I have two buttons. I have a benefit button link and I have a hidden benefit button link. Now, just quick pro tip, put your modifier, the one that's gonna be hidden, at the very beginning particularly if you have a long name like I have here that's more descriptive. I like to be descriptive with my classes. In the interactions panel, you're not going to be able to see if you if you name these exactly the same thing and you put hidden on the end, you're not going to be able to see it. So you're going to have a really hard time distinguishing between the two buttons. So put your descriptor on the beginning if you're going to use it in interactions. I know we don't normally do it that way. You put the descriptor at the end. But in this particular case, we're going to put the descriptor, the thing that's going to be make these button two buttons different, even though they're exactly the same, at, all, at the beginning, just so that we can see it inside of the interactions panel. Okay, two buttons is key. So if I go and I just click into this, this is the interaction that is on the button that is showing on the page right now. All that it is doing is my modal wrapper here, uh, you know, or, or my actual modal pop up. It's hidden initially. I click the button, it shows. Now you can add in opacities, you can add in all kind of other interactions here to make this pop up look a lot nicer. But for our purposes, I wanted to keep things very simple and just use a hide show interaction. I mean, you have to have hide show, but you can throw in an opacity so it fades in nice and fades out nice. I didn't do that just simply so that we could focus on these buttons because this could get a little bit complex. So we have our, our benefit button, right? And you see that, I click that, and the benefit button disappeared. Now if I click on this other one, the hidden benefit, it appeared. And that's exactly what we want to take place. Whenever you click this button initially, our pop-up pops up, and then our buttons basically swap. So the one that's showing, it hides. The one that's hidden originally, it shows. Now the other key to doing this, particularly when you're driving this to the CMS, is you want to make sure that you're not using class. So your 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 uh, trigger um, is not affecting the classes. Instead, it is affecting the selected element. Uh, that's key so that when I click this, it's not opening this pop-up over here, and when I close this, it's not closing this one here, right? Like. It's only working on those particular elements inside of that item. And, and so you, you just do with selected element. That will work perfect uh, in this situation where I have multiples in the grid. You do have to create multiple interactions. If you have a CMS, it works perfect as well. So whether you have 1, 2, 10, or 500, if you use selected element, it's always going to open up the one inside that is connected to the button that you have clicked. So that's another thing that you need to make sure of. All right, so this button right here, just let want you to see, I've actually hidden this button with a display hidden. 
originally, right? That's why you don't see it here. Now, what you could do is you could show this button. You could use the interaction to set the initial hidden initial state to hidden, but that just kind of makes the design look weird whenever you're looking at it. So I just went ahead and did a display none here, and I didn't mess with it in the interactions panel. All right, so if we click on this button, you notice that I have another interaction that's set up, hidden button close, and all of this does is it just closes our pop-up, it takes our benefit button, and it shows it, the one that we hid with the first interaction. It takes our hidden benefit button, and it hides it, the one that we just used to click on. And that's all that it's really doing. The other key is that you want these buttons to hide and show at the same time. And so you want to make sure that each of these are starting with the previous action or well I would say the second one not the first one because you don't want the first one here the second one right it is starting with the previous action so that way the user doesn't see this they, they don't see a they don't see a button not a button and then a button they don't get this flash that takes place so just make sure that you do that now the other thing you want to do is you want to set up a third interaction and I tried to do this with two interactions but it did not work. Uh, I don't know if it was a fluke or just some, sometimes these get kind of messed up but uh, just to be safe I set this up with a third interaction and this is what I would encourage you to do just so you don't get frustrated. So on here and this third interaction is basically doing the exact same thing as our hidden benefit button link interaction that's why I tried to set it up to begin with on the first one but it you know it messed up so we'll, we'll pop in here. And we'll see all it's doing is it's hiding that. It's taking our hidden benefit. It's hiding it. And it's taking our one that is originally visible, the button that's originally visible, and it's showing it. That way it's there so that you can click on it again. Again, these are you know, start with previous action. And that that's really it. I mean, the magic is having two buttons having one that's initially showing, whenever you click it, it's hiding it, and it's showing the other one. And then whenever you go to close the modal, you're just basically reversing that. This works great when you are creating some sort of custom menu, when you are creating a custom navigation, because most of the time whenever we have a menu or a navigation, like for instance here, you're going to use the same button oftentimes to close and open that navigation, but you're also going to use another button. Like in this instance, it might just be tapping on the screen. Uh, so you want to be able to give people options. And in order to do that, all you have to do is switch out that one. Now, this one you don't have to switch out because this is built into Webflow, but, but if you have a custom one, right, that's, that's not utilizing Webflow to do this for you, then... You just have to switch those two out. Use first click on every single thing. Don't use second click. And your menu, your button, your pop-up, uh, all of that will work really, really well. And it will be very smooth. And the user won't wonder, why, why, did, they, why did they mess up? Why am I clicking? And it's not working like it does here in the first one. All right. If you found some value out of this, uh, smash that like button for me. If you want more content like this, would you, you know, subscribe to the channel? And if this has been helpful for you in any way, be sure to leave a comment down below and tell me how you are using this particular feature inside of the interaction, swapping out the two buttons. Uh, maybe even link to a project you've done just to be able to see some of the ways in which this has been helpful for you. Hope to see you on the next video.